I'm a naturalist, namely, I believe there's a universe out there, and I want to understand it, and the methods that I will use are the methods of experience and reason primarily based upon the sciences. So humanism, I think, is the best expression of modern science. It's the scientific outlook, using the rigorous methods of the scientific inquiry in order to test hypotheses about nature. Okay. Dr. Geisler, you've been sitting there for a little bit. Let me get you in here. And that is, do you think that uh, skepticism, atheism, is philosophically inadequate today concerning the scientific evidence and the uh, view of the world? Well, I agree with Paul that we need to be rational, we need to be scientific. But when I look at the scientific evidence, it leads to belief in God. For example, uh, the Big Bang Theory, uh, by three lines of converging evidence, the expanding universe, the radiation echo, and the second law of thermodynamics, all lead scientifically to prove that the universe had a beginning. Now, one of the fundamental rational laws of all thought, and Paul is a rationalist, he wants to be rational, that's why I enjoy dialoguing with him, uh, is that every event, everything that comes to be, uh, has a cause. Now, if the universe came to be, then it's only rational to conclude that the universe had a cause. Let me illustrate by a uh, story of uh, uh, two uh, men, an atheist and a theist, who went for a walk in the woods. They came on a translucent ball, a glass ball about eight feet in diameter, and the theist said to the atheist, uh, where did it come from? He said, I don't know, but somebody must have uh, put it here. It just didn't pop into existence out of nowhere. They both agreed. And the theist said, well, if the ball is 16 feet in diameter, does it still need a cause? Well, you know, if little balls need causes, big ones need causes too. And he said, well, what if the ball is as big as the whole world? The atheist paused and said, well, yeah, if little ones need causes, and big ones need causes, and really, big ones need causes too. Then he said, what if the ball is as big as the whole universe? The atheist said, of course it doesn't need a cause, it's just there. That's not rational. Then you say the universe has a cause, and I take it that you would say that God caused the universe. To, and my question then is, if every event has a cause, what caused God? Well, see, you just confused the statement. Everything that comes to be has a cause. God didn't come to be, so he doesn't need a cause. Just as the atheist you believes... You contradicted your notion of No, I didn't. Let me finish. Cause. Just as the atheist believes that the universe is eternal, often, and therefore didn't need a cause, if you can have an uncaused universe, we can have an uncaused cause. God, what sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander? No, I don't know that the universe... I wouldn't say necessarily the universe is uncaused. If it's I think caused, there, then there must have I been a cause beyond there it, are, right? there are causes. there are causes. Now, you have the Big Bang, the, the hypothesis in contemporary physics and cosmology, that takes us back only to a point, but what caused the matter at that time before it exploded? So that uh, you well, can't stop. that's not what stop. the Big Bang you, does. You the Big Bang stop. hypothesis says that the very matter of the universe came into existence 10 to 20 billion years ago that uh, when you take it back to a point you reach a time where you have no space, no time, and no matter. You have literally nothing. Well, we cannot Ro say. Robert, we cannot say. Even agnostics, Robert Jastrow in his book, God and the Astronomers, says that it came into existence out of nothing some billions of years ago. Now, if it came to be, and every event that comes to be needs a cause, then the universe needs a cause too. Well, I don't want to talk about the universe. You have many divergent uh, lines of causality and many kind of events happening. What's wrong but with you the can't, universe? You can't, you're leaping beyond it. No, no, what's wrong with the uh, universe because, and talking about uh, the whole show, what Sagan calls the cosmos? You have the cosmos, was, but you have many, things, will you have many things happening in, in the cosmos. Physics only takes you up to a point. What happened before that point? Now, if everything has a cause, well, then God your, must have a cause. That's your question. No, no, see... But you make an exception to the your, point that everything has a cause. It's not an exception. You're the only rule, pushing your ignorance one back. Oh, no, it isn't. You're back. missing the point. You're not listening to it. Every event, Everything that comes to be has a cause. That's the principle. The universe came to be, therefore the universe has a cause. Now, if God always it's, existed, he didn't come to he be, did he doesn't need be. a cause. I see. Well, you're, you're, you're defining the situation, you're, you're assuming your case by definition. Not at all. The rational because you're defining, person, you say, how do you know that God did not come to be? How do you know that? We know that the universe came to but be. But how do you know that God did not come to be? And we know be? that everything that comes to be had a cause. Well, how do you know that God did not come to be? Because everything that comes to be has a cause. And if he caused the universe to come to be, he couldn't By have definition, come to be. you're defining, not you're trying to define what you want to prove. By the law of How rationality. You know? The law of rationality That's says not every, rational. That's an assumption. Comes, oh, you don't believe that. Well, how, uh, do, you know, wait, how oh, do you know? Okay, 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 okay. Let me, let me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a rational assumption. Uh, let's you let's start it. out with uh, a couple of things. It's an irrational saying. assumption. Irrational assumption is well, say things have causes? Well, let's, wait, wait, wait. Norman, Paul, hold it here. 
uh, I want to ask one question. What is the evidence scientifically that the uh, universe has not always been here? Start with. Well, I don't know whether the, I really don't, I said I was a skeptic. I don't know whether the universe was here, not, was or was not here, you say. I don't know that it came into being at a certain point. It seems to me you're leaping right. beyond the I, evidence. I, I, I can take that, Paul, but let me thesis. ask you this. It seems like that uh, you're always pushing the Christians in your magazine rationally and on the scientific evidence. Let me do the same to you, okay? And that is, what do you do with the scientific evidence of the second law of thermodynamics in relationship to what is here? Well, uh, it doesn't say anything about beyond the range of observation, and now you're leaping beyond the range of observation. You're only pushing your ignorance back one step. You have the universe, you want to explain it, and so you, you introduce an unintelligible, unexpl inexplicable being, a divine being, to explain it. That only... Oh, Paul, that I, only, I didn't do any of that. All, all I said... Case, oh, well, you missed my point, too. All I said is that it seems like if we're scientific, we're working with... Uh, what is observational and repeatable. Well, we can't yes. do that, so we have to work with what we do have here. Yes. Okay? What we do have here are heat laws. We do have energy laws. Yes. Okay? We do have that. Yes. Okay? Using just what I do have, not what you don't know, but what I do have, let's be rational on that. But what conclusion would you come to? You're jumping beyond what you have. You're jumping beyond the but laws I gotta of start physics, with what beyond I've got, observation, I? and you're postulating an unintelligible, unknown being who you said uh, always well, let's, existed let's not, and did let's not, not come Let's not postulate anything about unknown being. Let's just take the logical conclusion that the second law of thermodynamics brings us to, namely that the, the universe had to have a beginning. I don't see where that necessarily happens. Well, it most certainly no, does. No, and had even to have a agnostics or an end. end. Okay, let's, let's let Norman Kinney admit explain that. why. Norman, let's slow down. In five ways, the British atheist Anthony Kinney says, the Big Bang Theory holds that the universe came into existence. So, as the atheist, he said, I'd have to conclude that the universe came into existence from nothing and by nothing. Now, you talk about ultimate irrationality. They used to criticize us as theists for believing that someone made something out of nothing, ex nihilo creation, and left. Now they believe no one made something out of nothing. Ha ha! Well, I deny the notion that the universe came into being ex nihilo, out of nothing. You're leaping beyond then the evidence. Then it's eternal. Then you I, have something that's I, it not seems caused. To me it's, what you just told me a moment ago is irrational to believe that something was uncaused like God. No, it seems to me that oh, it it's, is it's, not any less, that it's not any less intelligible to say that well, the universe was Why is it rational for you to believe eternal. the universe is uncaused and irrational for me to believe that God is uncaused? We are constantly referring to the second law of thermodynamics in this program. I thought you would like to hear a short definition. The second law of thermodynamics states that in a closed system, such as the whole universe, the amount of usable energy is decreasing. That is, energy is being used up or transformed into heat. So the universe is running down. But if the universe is running down, then it had to have a beginning. It is not eternal. If the universe were eternal, then there would have been enough time for it to have already run down by now. But since we are still here, and the usable energy is still being exhausted, then energy is not infinite. The universe must have had a beginning. It's, what you just told me a moment ago is irrational to believe that something was uncaused like God. No, it seems to me that oh, it it's, is it's not any less it's not any less intelligible to say that why the universe is it rational was for you to believe eternal. the universe is uncaused and irrational for me to believe that God is uncaused? Because you, you, you think you're explaining what's happening in the universe, but you're not explaining it. You're reading in an item of faith. We're well, certainly I not say explaining as a skeptic, it if you say there's no cause. I say as a skeptic, let's examine physics. Now, in physics, the Big Bang Theory makes sense. You're going far beyond physics. You're introducing something. You're introducing an intelligent being who has created the universe. This is unobservable. You've not tested it. All right, let me, let me slow it down here. So you're saying that the universe does have a beginning via the Big Bang and second, third, uh, second law of thermodynamics, but you will say you don't know what caused it and when Geisler says that God caused it okay now we have to simply say we weren't there we can't say we all can check it out and scientifically repeat it so number one is both theories okay are not factual in the sense that we can go back there and scientifically repeat it. So that exactly. anybody that says that evolution is a fact, we've got to throw that out right No, away. that's something else. That doesn't follow you. Sneak that in. Evolution is quite independent, quite independent of this point, you say. Uh, I, I don't know that the universe has a beginning. All that I'm saying, and I think all that we can say, is that in contemporary physics, the Big Bang Theory is a useful hypothesis. But you're going far beyond that. You're bringing in theology, you're going beyond science. Well, I, didn't, I didn't think I brought anything in except the scientific law and drew a conclusion. 
well, it's a conclusion that I that I, I questioned the clue. On what basis, scientifically, do you question that conclusion? I, I, I question the notion. When you talk about a cause, you talk about certain antecedent conditions that you can observe, and then you you test the the hypothesis. But when you talk about God as being the cause, okay, I didn't say anything about God yet. Okay, Norman's been saying that. God, but, the cause of the universe. Yeah, but he's I, I want I just want to get to this one point, Paul, and that is that it seems awfully interesting to me that using just science, okay. The second law of thermodynamics, which says that the universe had to have a beginning because if it was eternal, it would have already run down and we'd, we'd all be sitting here in an ice box, okay? Well, so we, it, we're not, down. obviously, it, so it had to have a beginning, and apparently recently. Now, that's that there. I haven't snuffed uh, God at all. All we have to do is say, John, now, what cause are we talking about for that? You're you saying say you don't know. John, how recent are you talking about? What are you talking about? How recent? I'm not talking about anything. I'm simply coming to that 10, conclusion. Years? No, I'm just taking a conclusion. Years? 10 to 20 billion years. 10 to 20, 10 to 20 billion years. Okay, so the conclusion okay. is it had to have a start, right? Uh, You'd agree to that? I don't agree to the notion of start or a beginning, because what went before that, I don't know. You don't know, but the conclusion the, with the evidence that you do know what? would suggest that it's probably it started. No, I'm not going to say probably it started. You don't say the, the second law of thermodynamics is good explosion. evidence, Paul, for that? The evidence suggests that there was an explosion and that there's a rapid moving away from the center. You can see this through the uh, spectroscopic analysis of the shift towards red as the astronomers look at the, as, as the heavens. And so 15 to 20 billion years later, we're talking about a process of evolution, which follows from that. All right. Uh, I got a couple of minutes here, and we got to wrap this up. Uh, Norman, what, uh, what would you postulate from the scientific evidence? And then, uh, Paul, will let you respond, and uh, Norman will come back to you here for a final word. But where are you going with the scientific evidence and what we're saying it's, here? It's very simple. I'm just using two principles. One is a fundamental rational principle that's the basis of all modern science. Every event, everything that comes to be, has a cause. The universe came to be, therefore the universe had a cause. And the evidence that the universe came to be is the second law of thermodynamics. It's running out of usable energy. Therefore, it can't be eternal or it would have run down a long time ago. Therefore, the universe must have had a beginning. That's a scientific fact. And if uh, secular humanists want to be scientific, they have to face the facts. And the facts are that the universe had a beginning. If it had a beginning, there must have been a beginner. We can speculate later as to what kind of beginner, what kind of cause it was, but there had to be a cause. Otherwise, they're left with the absurd position that nothing produced something, and that is absurd. Now, is that so irrational, Paul, what he just said? Yes, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think he, in the first place, he's introduced the notion that there had to be a beginner, you say. I, d I deny that there was necessarily a beginning. But the notion that the Why would beginner you is to read in some anthropomorphic or anthropocentric notion uh -huh. of someone who begins the universe, some person. Okay, Paul, let me just get the question right. Is it, what would you call the fact of a full stop, and the evidence suggests that, what would you call it? Well, as I said at the earlier point, I was a skeptic about the origins of the universe. That was my first point. I don't think we have sufficient evidence to say. And this is merely conjecture and merely guesswork. In the, and it's not scientific. It's merely, the, it's merely a theological hope. Why do all the scientists, even skeptics, atheists and agnostics, believe that the universe had a beginning? Even Paul Davies is talking about the universe coming into existence out of nothing, without a cause. And Anthony Kinney and Robert Jastrow and all the scientists, they're not disputing that the universe had a beginning. All the evidence points it. They may dispute whether there's a God who caused it, but I think you're not looking at the evidence when you say the universe didn't have a beginning because there's firm evidence that it did. Physicists are uncertain at that point okay, whether okay. there's sufficient Okay, we've got a break. We're going to come back to this topic next week. Although, we want to talk about the things that uh, materialists have yet to explain adequately, to some people anyway, Paul, namely, everything ultimately came from nothing, order came from chaos, harmony came from discord, life came from non-life, reason came from irrationality, personality came from non-personality, and morality came from amorality.